This is what we use right now. For air conditioning, this is that system that pulls the air up and out. And at a hot show, this is what I'll do before the show starts. Kalamazoo is home to a lot of famous names, including Pfizer, the maker of the first COVID vaccine. It's a college town. In fact, Poppins and I went to college here. Kalamazoo will even pay for your college. And many of our romantic dates included hopping freight trains and riding them around the city. Gibson Guitars moved from here in 1984, but employees adopted the old factory and still make them by hand at Heritage Guitar. The Checker Motor Company, makers of the infamous New York City Checker Taxi Cab. There's the amazing Sweetwater Donuts, but most important is that Poppins and I met here. So one of the places that we used to frequent for concerts and uh, other things was the State Theater, which was... Uh, which was kind of a cool place, but it was almost lost to time. It's a theater from uh, from vaudeville times, and uh, it's kind of a neat place. So today, we get the opportunity to tour the theater legally, if you know what I mean. Because of the theater's closure due to coronavirus, the staff has improvised innovative ways to build a stronger relationship with the community, including the tour that we're about to take. Welcome. To the theater, we were built in 1927. We opened on July 14th with a vaudeville production. I'm actually currently doing some research on what that production entailed, which is really cool. Uh, but they had nine performers in this vaudeville act called the Serenaders. We were owned and operated by Colonel Walter Scott Butterfield until 1982. The Kalamazoo State Theater was designed by John Everson and is one of the very few remaining atmospheric picture palaces still intact today. It was called atmospheric because sitting in the theater had the feeling of sitting in a 19th century Spanish courtyard open to the night sky. So, so it controls a variety of instruments. It does. And is it controlled by air? Is that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the rebuild of this thing was crazy. They did some, I don't know what specifically they renovated in the 60s, but they did some renovations in the 60s. I know they added the elevator that allowed it to lift up, but it is no longer in use. It's in disuse at this time. Uh, unfortunately, in the 80s, when they were doing repair work on the roof and the electrical work, they did smash a ton of the pipes. It needs a multi-million dollar repair. Plan pipe set up with the blocks up there and the hammers. Our tour was an idea born as a creative answer to the shutdown of small venues all over the country due to the COVID pandemic. So the staff, driven to keep their historic venue alive, began innovating new ideas to draw the community closer to the venue. One of the events was called State on the Street, where the State Theater brought local musicians to their rooftop to perform concerts to the social distance audiences spread out on the street. During this event, the theater's bar was open and as patrons awaited their beverage, they would strain to take a peek into the theater's grand courtyard. From that, the idea of offering tours was born. Yes, this is our alley door. So this is used for load in and load out for all of our productions. Um, it's got two big double doors and also a small like Wizard of Oz style door. That ramp can actually move up to two full-grown elephants. It used to have circus access for four dollars. There was a, a rigging system or a pulley system installed because during the vaudeville days you'd have your huge trunks of costumes. And it'd be really challenging to get them up that staircase, so they would hoist them up all the levels two and three, and then also put props and scenery um, in the scene deck, which is on the third floor up there. So a little bit of use. I use about 10 to 15 of them now. It is uh, all original. Mm-hmm, it is. <laughs> so these are the stars, dimmers for the candelabras. I don't know what these are. I won't lie to you. Do you ever pull them just to find I them? don't know if I Sandbag want. comes down. Once we do reopen, these are our brand new pit chairs, never been used. Very excited. If any of us on the team can, can battle. <laughs> <laughs> should we do a performance? The queen, me lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And all our days have lighted death. Tis a tale told by a fool, full of sand and fury, signifying nothing. 
stage. As we toured the massive theater, it became evident that this was more than just a job for Rachel and Harry, our guides, but a passion, and more than a passion, they viewed the work as an opportunity to make a difference, especially during the most difficult time for small venues since the Great Depression, when this theater started. <laughs> The projection room of the State Theater has been left as it was, frozen in time. Film for trailers still spliced in the projector with Saturday and Sunday's trailer film still awaiting debut in a drawer. So there's a walking space up there with yes. little light sockets poked through the ceiling and you change yes. them. I have not personally seen them because we've only been up there a it's tiny a bit. It's a walking but... space. I mean, yes, there's planks across there. <laughs> the State Theater was closed in 1982, a victim of the new mundane suburban lifestyle dominating the country. Plans were considered to replace the grand building with a parking structure, but the citizens of Kalamazoo mobilized with the Save the State campaign. Then in 1985, a local developer actually bought the old girl and began the work of renovation and preservation. 35 years later, the Hinman Company is still dedicated to preserving this iconic piece of history. The real story here seemed as much about the people who were dedicated to saving the theater in the 80s and the staff that continues to rebuild its importance today. If you have a chance to tour the theater or view a performance, I'd recommend you experience this grand venue. <laughs>